a champion that I guess is a snowball champion bot lane, which is kind of a strange thing to talk about. It's a statement of intent, and it's uh, this is going to be some game. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see exactly how this all pans out in a second. But these two teams, they have looked so good in recent tournaments. Azubu, you know, in internationally and KT from the games we've seen have looked so good. And KT, they've been the up-and-coming organization, and KT1, I think, have been leading the charge in terms of performance. So, if taking taking this game here against Blaze, closing out the Series 2-1 and getting to Singapore instead of Blaze, says quite a lot about how strong the organization is. And you know, what they're saying, having only been formed just over a month ago now, very young organization still. Picked up a lot of good players from a lot of teams that are either are, have changed around or are no longer with the Korean scene. And this, I mean, you know, they want to go, they want to compete internationally, they want to show the world what they've got. They've got to go past the Zubu Blaze, a team that knows a whole lot about international competition. And let's not forget that it was KT Rolls to A in the qualifiers for IM Singapore before the round of 16 that knocked out Azubu Frost, one of the other teams you would have to say be the favorites for this event. So they have the opportunity to knock the Azubu organization out of IM Singapore. And what a statement that would be. And definitely Azubu Blaze looking for a little bit of revenge here. You know, they don't, they don't want their organization to be beaten by the same team. What, what would that say to them, you know? So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of pride, a lot of... A lot of tournament on the line right now, and certainly getting a chance to go to IEM Singapore. Not just, you know, gets you a chance to get to a great tournament, and, but puts you in a situation where you get a lot of money. Just for showing up to IEM, you do pretty well. There's a $50,000 prize pool for that event. Although you are left to your own devices to get there. That's true. But I'm sure that's not a problem for these two professional teams. And, I mean, winning a tournament of that scale is just absolutely... That's a dream. What team doesn't want to win IEM? You know, it's like saying, you go, oh, do you want to win MLG? No, not really. I'm not interested. Of course you are. If you're a professional team. That's, that's your dream. That's what you that's what you play for. And there's, there's lots of big money, big prizes, and big glory on the line here. Not just for this event, but of course for IM coming up as well. So we are going to kick things off down here in the bottom lane. Nope, never mind. Reset down here. Looking to be very aggressive. He's actually going to find Helios. And that's a beautiful little bit, but he checks the brush. Possibly a little bit too that. He does use his... Oh, dodges the uh, rupture there very nicely. He uses his ghost there to get out. But Invade foiled there with a really cute brush trick there from Helios. He he knew what was coming. He studied reset. He's had a couple of games. You know, he's, he's seen them play. They frost played them as well. I think he knows what's up right now. And completely denying any aggression that reset wanted to go for there. And that's been his trademark, I have to say, in a lot of these games. Reset's aggression. He's dictating the play, the flow of the lanes, and a lot of jungle invasion. A lot of aggression. And him actually not getting it off there is uh, is the exception to the rule. He's been on point with his invades thus far, but uh, good organized play as Uber plays. Yeah, Helios just really outfoxed the fox there in that spot. Really, really nice there. Looks like Zero is pushing it early on here, playing Zyra up against Oriana, being piloted by Ambition for this last game. Pretty standard right now. I mean, Oriana takes a few levels to get going. Zyra aggressively using her plants. But and her AoE there to try and get these minions down. Just push her in a bit. And Rumble struggling a little bit before level 3. No real surprise. Flame doing a very good job pushing him in, in, in here early against Spider-Man. No points in Flame Splitter, of course, at level 1 and 2. The shield and the, uh, the Electra Harpoon picked up at level 1. So, won't really look to trade till about level 4 is probably the time when Rumble starts to ramp up in that uh, top lane. Yep. And back down the bottom. I mean, this is never what you want to happen when you see Cogmon Nunu, especially with Leona, but... If you can afford to do this in this lane, pushing is really beneficial. And I think they know where Olaf is as well. So this aggression is uh, quite quite intelligent here from Azubu Blaze. But Jack is just trying to push in this lane, you know, prevent them from... Just deny them space to really make moves and initiate on the Kog'Maw or the Nunu. Which is really what Corky Leona wants to be doing. And it's this aggressive play just from level 1, this reckless disregard of the jungler that allows Captain Jack to open up those CS lanes so early. Because if you push in early, a lot of effort required between the AD and support to rock all those last hits. Yeah. And, I mean, as you said, the base damage is not that good. A lot of Hero doing damage. admirably, though. Only behind uh, five CS so far. Yeah, not too bad. But this blood boiled Kog'Maw is just spitting down minions as fast as he can. And Captain Jack has, does not miss many CS. So we'll see if no. Hero can keep up. I mean, Captain Jack took a very definitive lead in that last game. Hero struggling a little bit to keep up, although there was some craziness going on with lane swaps, so maybe he can't be blamed entirely, but certainly Captain Jack is looked to be one of the strongest AD carries in this tournament. Certainly one of the strongest in the world. He's shown it. 
I mean, he wants to show his wares on the international scene once again, but uh, much of this game's go. Yeah, I mean, two MLGs and an IM would be a pretty nice trophy cabinet for Zubu Blaze, but they're going to win this game first, and that's their chance to get there, so we'll see. Looks like Helios now coming in the mid lane looking for Zero. Choga trying to line it all up, they're just hiding in the bush, and there he goes in. The ping has started. Very fast, Choga coming in, that's a great grasping loot, and Zero is trying to get the trade kill here, and Reset comes in as well, but I think that is going to be first blood, and there it is to Oriana. And Ori well out of the way there. No passive there. Helios just takes a big chunk of damage there. From, I think, Rise of the Thorns is what I figured out the name of that one was. <laughs> In our fun trivia time with Zara. But yeah, first level for Ori. around Jax up top lane. And now level 5, he's able to do that. Turning that lane completely around. Going from flame pushing in very early to Vitamin having a really nice push in now. And he's going to go back and probably get himself a ward. Continue this aggression here in this lane. And it's kind of what we thought was going to happen with Rumble. Certainly a champion that... Uh, just gets better with levels. Level 3, level Interesting 4. Interesting to see him rush the Sork Shoes here. Not a Doran Shield. Nothing related to a defensive item here. I thought I could have forgiven him for going uh, a Ruby Crystal, you know, to the uh, expected, like, haunting guys. You do usually see a couple of Magic Pen items picked up in the Rumble. But uh, an expression of intent. He's clearly happy to trade with, Rump with uh, Jax on his own terms. Yeah, and he just wants to be even more aggressive. I mean, the, the mobility helps a little bit, but really, it's melee best range anyway. Kind of. Rumble is more range than Jax, but not entirely range. Oh, I mean, I, they're, 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 they're fiercely melee in the same ways. I mean, yes. one of them has a gap closer, the other one has has a movement speed and a slow. But, uh, you know, Rumble an AP bruiser, and Jax, you know, an AD bruiser. And Rumble, as always, looking strong here in the early few levels in his lane. Can hit level 6 soon as well. In fact, he's already got it. Looks like Flame has gone back now. Phosphorus bomb there for Hero. Wants to do a lot of damage here. Zenith Blade attempted there from all, but he does miss. Captain Jack, just relentless. He got an early vamp scepter and some Zerker Greaves. So really, really just wants to push as hard as he can here. The hero, quite happy. Yeah, he's looking good. Only five it's not ideal. Still. They don't have the same lane presence, but uh, he's not getting crushed in CS this game. Leona takes a lot of free damage there, though. That's certainly one of the things about missing them Zenith plays on Leona. You really have to go all or nothing when you play her. And when you miss, you just take a lot of free damage, especially from somebody like Cogmore. You see Reset now picking up Red Buff for himself as well. Just powering through the jungle on Olaf. Progreth actually has a very fast boost of mobility here. And the Tardigal, there we go. Helios pretty pretty comfortable with this build right now. And that reset's going back as well. I wonder what he'll be getting. What do we get, Olaf? Olaf, Hardigold as well. The jungler's basically on par as well in terms of items. In terms of CS as well, it's pretty even. Shows up a couple. But they're jungle minions, so they're not worth as much. And look at Lustboy. So aggressive here. It's trying to zone them out. Really wants to just, again, deny this Leona's space. Leona does need quite a bit of room to move. She wants to find those those very nice angles for a lot of her skill shots. That's in the play. Very important to her. And look at this in. clever ward by Vitamin up the top lane. He knew that Cho'Gath was coming in for the lane gang. So instead of warding the uh, the river, he elected to ward the uh, the brush entrance to the lane gang. That's, uh, that's a very savvy play by Vitamin. Well, there's a nice blue ward and a nice uh, mid ward there as well place for KT, so they kind of had decent vision of Cho, obviously not in the river itself, but they're probably going to see it coming, Olaf! Almost finds the undertow there. That was very close to being a blue buff steal. Would have made Ambition very grumpy in the mid there, but she does pick it up. That's going to make Oriana happy. Although, Zyra is winning in CS pretty handily. Vitamin's actually in a bit of trouble up in the top lane. Oh, the Heat's now to run away with that Junkyard shield going, but he's got to back off now. Flame continuing his... Oh no. Vitamin knows. He backs off again. Flame takes a few free turret hits there, and Olaf's going to come up in the top. Cho'Gath's actually fishing now as well. Really Might trying to secure that kill. Come here with some proxy. No, Cho'Gath just backs away. Yeah. Sides against it. He's like, eh, that's fine. I'll just go back to my jungle. I'll help you push, Jax, in fact. That's what I'll do. Make sure your lane resets properly. Hero very low down here as well. So much Cogmore damage coming in. Really need to try and uh, get a gank happening, but Olaf's been busy. Reset's been up, you know, around the top lane, doing some farm. Oriana's coming around as well. And look at this, immediately back off here. Nice ball, actually great ult here! Ambition could be in trouble. But flashes out of the way there. A really nice counter run there from Zero. Oh, Jack. That living artillery. One more? No, not quite. Hero backs off. Even Valkyries as well. He knows. He knows the range. He knows he could have been in trouble there. But Captain Jack continuing to assert donuts here. Now he's growing a bit more of a CS lead. That's a great bit from Zyra. The beautiful stun! But the absolute zero from Nunu is going to keep him at bay. And Wall takes a little bit of damage, flash from Zero though, he wants it and he gets it! That's a great play there from Zyra. Even tanking the uh, the passive there from Kog'Maw, maybe trying to get a bit more damage onto Nunu. But they needed something down here in the bottom lane, did KT1. 
And that was and Zara, and, and, and Zara, you know, she, Zero there committed a lot of time to bottom lane. Forced a flash out of Orianna, had the ult down, still got the kills. So, worth it in the end, and hopefully gives Corky a bit of a chance to get more of a, a foothold in this lane. Yeah, and that's exactly what they need, because Cogmore, when he's going even, it's bad. When he's going better, it's worse. And you definitely want to try and keep him down, so that's going to go a long way to at least keeping Hero more in this lane, because he was losing a little bit, obviously caught up a bit now, so that really timely gank there from Zara helping things out. Nice room from mid. We don't often see... I mean, often, you know, we think about junglers. You know, they're the ones that have to kind of come to the lane, but, you know, mid, they're pretty close to the other two lanes as well. If you get a full... And Olaf's presence has been required up top lane so far. You know, he... It's not like he's been doing nothing and farming his camps, he just hasn't been able to do it, so... Zero put it on his own shoulders to provide the roam and execute it perfectly. And that's exactly the kind of play that's going to keep KC1 in this game, I mean... There's not a whole lot going on, but it almost feels like there's a, you know, a clock ticking, a bit of a doomsday clock here with Cogmore. Because you know that as the late game gets closer and closer for Azubu, it just gets Cogmore so much Cogmore will outscale Corky, that's just how it, just how it goes. Yeah, and their team will just outscale. I think they've set up Cogmore well this time, by the way. I think they've set it up a bit better. Because in that last game we saw with MVP White, not quite as much. I mean, KT1's still got a lot of chances here in this game. Make no mistake, this game is very close still. Barely a thousand gold between these two teams. In fact, it's not even. Just under. But they have to try and contain Cogmore. They have to be in a spot where their mid-game presence looks very good so that they can try and force things out before the late game gets too out of hand for them. And if they get behind in the early game, it's it's basically done. So, Olaf's picked up on Oracles. Picked, cleared out the uh, the Nocturne almost ward for the, the advance warning for the uh, lane gank. And uh, it's good. They're picking up a bit of a vision advantage here because... Uh, they need any sort of advantage they can carve out, especially if they're going to rely on the Zyra roam down bot. And this is really going to help reset. Uh, I think they must know that maybe Chosey... Yeah, Wallface checks it. Actually looks for Kong and he does find it. Reset coming in now as well. They want to get Kogmore if they can, but maybe not that safe. Hero coming in there, but Captain Jack is taking a lot of damage and he will go down. Reset though, cutting back and forth. He wants to try and save his oracles and he does. Wall takes a lot of damage there and there's a rupture to cover the retreat. But that was a great gank there, and I think Azubu Blaze thought their counter gank was going to be better than Olaf, because they knew he was there. They absolutely knew, but KT knew, they knew they could get it there, and maybe this will turn into a dragon as well for them. Looks like it will. Zero's in here as well. Zara, great at doing buffs, by the way. And you were talking about the need for KT to make use of their comp. They're doing it. They really are. And that Oracle to reset setting up a whole lot more. I mean, we put a lot on his shoulders in the draft saying, he is the man. He is the man that needs to help KT win this game. And this is the kind of play he needs to be making. Aggressive oracles here and all of clearing out the woods, making the plays. And resets. And you know, for people complaining about how much the jungle stagnated into double GB10, although he has got double GB10, let's be clear here, he kind does. of support junglers that are more about warding and team fight CC. Reset is uh, carry junglers all the time, as you could tell by the targeted bands. There was the Nocturne ban, the Lee Sin ban, uh, and the other, the other one escapes me actually, but it was you know another carry jungler. They just are very afraid of reset's presence. And uh, it was Mundo actually? I think. Mundo, okay, as well. So, uh, man, a lot of a lot of a lot on Olaf's shoulders, but uh, he's doing his absolute best here. He is. I mean, he played Jarvan last game as well. Speaking of carry junglers, so J Jarvan certainly is within that category. I don't think firmly, but certainly. and he was probably the uh, the person who could hold their head up highest from that game. He was. He really was. He had a great game, but. As for the team, not quite there for that one. I guess back in the top lane, not too much in terms of CS. Flame's a little bit ahead, but here comes Reset again. Needs to make the plays, but Flame gets out. Just leaps off to a minion, no problem at all. And 110 to 97, about 10, 15 CS difference there in the top lane. Not too bad, though. Looks like Flame, though, very confident on his jacks, but he plays very aggressively. There is a lane game being set up there in top lane as well, so keep my eye out on that. And uh, no more wards sadly up top for Rumble. In fact, yeah, he's gone. He may even, he's going to give up a lot of damage here in this turret. Maybe even the whole thing. Flame looks for him. He finds, knows that he's recalling. But now it's He time. must know that, that that must also give him that advantage. Knows that, hey, if he's going to proxy that hard and take two free tower hits, Cho'Gath's probably there. Yeah, so Rumble, you know, using the spice since they're getting out of the way. Really smart play there. And Cho's setting up. He's got oracles for himself. To be expected there. A good response there from Helios. Doesn't want to be the only one without an oracles roaming around the jungle. And it picks up some raids. Zara back in blue buff. And Zara does have the item advantage. The completed uh, Athena's Unholy Grail compared to just the constituent parts for Orianna. Though she does have the gold to finish it, I believe. I think she does. Just haven't quite gone back to shop yet. 
And double blue buff now in the mid. Both mids pick up their blues again. And we'll continue the race here. Point to see us ahead though for ambition is quite nice. And Oriana, once she gets levels, once she gets blue buff, definitely can start clearing out this mini waves pretty quickly. I mean, so can Zyra, but Oriana's very, very efficient once she gets going. But it looks like bottom Double lanes. golems been picked up here. Yeah, been backed off actually. Hero's really caught up here. I mean, he's only been about 5 CS the difference for the most part, and he's even that back up to a pretty much that again. They do no chose here though, so they're going to have to be careful. Wall does have another ward? No, it does not. Human ward time. Just wants to make sure that Cho isn't coming. But he is going to show himself here in mid. Does find another ward. So the aggression can continue down the bottom lane now for KT. But this game is bouncing on... Oh, Vitamin. In trouble. He's finding it increasingly, increasingly hard to lane against Rumble here. And unfortunately, Olaf not available to relieve some of the pressure. Equalizer on the minions there. And continue proxying from Flame. He is so aggressive. It's funny that this is the guy that replaced Shy. Because I'm getting... I'm well, getting flashed. I mean, Shy was subbing, let's be honest. He replaced Reaper. So, re yeah, replaced Reaper. But I, like, it's, sorry, I guess it's funny to me that Shy was the guy that's subbing for him. Because it almost feels like, you know, a shadow of Shy right now with the very aggressive proxying here. I mean, he's not playing Singe, unfortunately, but... He'd be forgiven for thinking he's taking he's spirit he's uh, channeling the spirit of Singe with all this proxying behind the turret though. Yeah, just so much aggression. Flame really likes to take over his lands, it seems like. Not afraid at all. And Jack's a good champion if you want to just go toe-to-toe -to -toe all the time with your enemy. Captain Jack, by the way, that was the most ridiculous dodge of a Xen the plate I think I've ever seen. He actually just casually walked out of that. I mean part of that is due to the high mobility because of the Surly Seal and the Blood Boil, but he just knew, he saw it. He just walked back. And Captain Jack, he's known for dodging skill shots, but that is that is something else. So, I mean, really, what can what can we say? What more can we say about Captain Jack? To share up, he's show pretty up. good at he's ADK. Pretty good at ADK. Solar oh, flare missing. Solar there. flare misses just slap. Yeah, hard to judge there from Walker's again. To be fair so though, fast. I mean the spacing of the lane was it was a strange engage because I mean Corky would have had to valk in even if that solar flare hit, so not sure what Wall was thinking there. And chose here as well. I mean, you know, you play Leona, you kind of feel like you have to do something. We are going to see a tower dive now. Cho gets around the back. Notice there's no wards here, but Wall's going to check it. I think it could, it could be to his doom. The Feral Screen misses though, and he flashes out of the way. The Valkyrie there from Hero is over. That's a great rupture, and a lot of damage coming in. There's the absolute zero, but Wall reinitiates there onto Captain Jack, and that's a beautiful bit of play. I think Cancelled Noon is all in there as well to reduce a little bit of that damage. And nobody dies there in the end. No feast available for Cho'Gath. That probably would have been a kill onto Leona there. But uh, amazingly, in such a close trade, everyone walks away with some health. Yeah, no worries. But uh, this is still going to favor Cogmore here. He is now pushing in this lane. In fact, Munichog, yeah, that's a dead tower. All right, so the first tower of the game. It's 18 minutes almost. Finally goes down. And I guess in, in tradition, by, as tradition, as the players are the ones to do it. They've been known for pushing some towers every now and then. Flame as well, look at this. Now look over here, Olaf has gotten face checked by Cho'Gath. And finding Helios, Ragnarok through the rupture. He does want to pick it up, there's a great slow there from Orianna. Command distance is such a useful ability. I mean, to be fair, reset very low on mana. He probably would not have been able to finish that kill, but you're right, a good flash nonetheless. Yeah. Better be safe than sorry, that's for sure. You know, you might look silly when you flash, you might not need to, but you look even stupider when you die. And Olaf now continuing his reign of terror. Gonna keep running up here, gonna find Flame, in fact it's a good spot, but lots of really nice wards here for Azubu. Flame knows exactly which way to run. Ooh, he's maybe gonna get cut off here, no, Oriana's coming in for support. Really nice subtle little play there from Ambition. Just moves into a position where Jax, if he needs to, has her as an escape route. Really nice little play, really nice. Double FD ends up in mid now, by the way. They are just trading So skills. little between these two teams, best through time. All you can really say is that Captain Jack is ahead on CS and playing a hyper carry compared to the more standard AD carry like Corky. It's not like Corky's horrible late game. He's more than serviceable, but uh, he's no Cogmore, especially without a support like Nunu to buff him up. Correct. And, I mean, could we ask for really, could we ask for anything more than having a close game for our last game of the night? Especially against these two teams. I mean, we'll see. This game is... It's going to get to a point where this game's going to explode. And this is a matchup I think we will see plenty of times in the future. Oh, boy. As the turret dive comes into Rumble, he's in a lot of trouble. Yep. And now that is finally Flame going to pick up what he wanted there. He spent all this time trying to dive, proxying it up, being aggressive. And Flame's just dominance of top lane. When he looked, when he's looked good, he's looked incredible. And now the engage coming around for Dragon. Was attempted there by KT, but not quite taken in 4v4 action. Maybe 4v5? No, never mind. Rumble's dead. And this is going to be Dragon for Zubu Blaze. And Flame takes top tower as well. 2-0 now for Zubu Blaze in the turret score. And who can stop the champ? 
This is, I mean, Jax, again, he's a fantastic duelist. And Flame just seems to put himself in these spots where he's ahead. And he says, you know what? Come, come, come into my arena. Come into my office. The only answer I have to that is it's certainly not Rumble. No, not this time around. So there, there was that kind of window around level four to five where you're like, okay, with the jungle gang, probably could take down Jax this Rumble. But uh, that time's unfortunately long past. And Flame knew that too. He basically played to not have that happen to him for as long as he needed it to. And now he's just taken over this lane. Three in out of turrets all down now, by the way. Azubu Blaze are in a very nice position, although we could see a counter push here from KT. They really need to start taking out some turrets though, because they're just gonna they are gonna get starved on this map. Very What's aggressive that? move here. Oh uh, Tyrodos but has no mana. Yeah, reset around the back there. Trying to go for a great ult there, pulls in zero. And Zara there with the ultimate trying to pick up her mission. It's gonna be close, but not enough to pass it. No does miss. And now equalizer are coming up for Rumble, I think maybe trying to snap Zyra. But that went to Azubu Blaze. They didn't lose their turret and they're still killing people. And the pressure right now, I mean, slowly but surely, Azubu Blaze flame now in, in there as well with the tower dive. Vitamin taking a lot of damage. There's a feast as Captain Jack picks up Rumble. And there's a double kill for Captain Jack. Jeez. Still no return kill despite the full on turret dive from Flame there. Very, very strong engage. From Three for Blaze. zero. And Azubu Blaze, we kind of, you know, we joked about it. They seem to like to lose game one. Saw them lose game one against MVP White, and it wasn't even like, oh, it was a close game that they made mistakes in. It was close to a point, and then they just got dismantled by MVP White. MVP White just executed flawlessly and just took them out. It wasn't close by the end of that game, and Azubu Blaze rattled back with two very one-sided games. Here, KT1 took the first game. Azubu Blaze destroyed them in game two. And, and it's just a real shame that we weren't able to see that first game and kind of dissect what it was by KT's play that really, really... Or was it that they kept Captain Jack down? Was it the camp to lane? We don't know, unfortunately. All we've seen is a fairly impressive display from Azubu Blaze in the second game, and right now in the driver's seat in the third, but a long way to go. Yeah, I mean, again, I talk about it. When you take out these three out of turrets, especially three to zero, the amount of control you get is just absolutely absurd. And the word I used before, I think, is quite appropriate here. They are going to starve KT from this map. And they have the late game comp. That's the scary part. You know, KT can do all the turtling they want, but that's exactly what Azubu want. They're happy with that if that's the case, but they're even happier if they're ahead. So it's it's looking bad, I have to say. There's a lot of momentum and positioning in this game that really favors Azubu right now. But KT, they are n by no means out of it. They've got a lot they can do here. And they're going to fight it out. I don't think, unless this game gets ridiculously one-sided, that they are looking to surrender. I mean... Last game of the day. Last game anyone's going to play for this qualifier. Last chance for Singapore. They're going to play it out. And they're certainly going to fight their hardest here. Again, no, by no means down and out right now against the Zibu Blaze. But backs to the wall. Pressure is on for KT right now. Some of these CS leads are starting to get serious. Their pastry time. I mean, 218 to 156 at the top lane. Jax is comprehensively won this lane. 258 to 201 in the mid lane. Oriana starting to get ahead for sure. Flame is con Oh, wow. Kills Vitamin, walks on now on the wall. Last boy actually uh, picks up a tower down there as Cog and him are pushing in flame. He finally dies to four members, but look what's happening down the bottom lane. Azubu Blaze are pushing in, ambition gets a kill into Olaf as they walk in there. And the tunneling on trying to kill Flame there. Flame, so much presence up top, drew four people and an in 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 inhibitor turret taken down by Captain Jack there. Great map awareness from Azubu Blaze. Just far too much pressure from Azubu. They are choking their opponents in this game. Look at look at the control. They're just waltzing through the blue side of the red jungle here. No respect at all. And why should they? They're not going to get caught. They have a ridiculous amount of map control. What is what what does Flame eat for breakfast every morning that lets him do this? I have no idea. All I can say is how much how much respect can we give out to Flame here? He, you know, he had that snafu with Aurelia, trying to solo the red buff at level one, and it failed. And it's easy to look at him and say, you know, that noob new top laner, what's he doing? But uh, his Jax play, the two times we've seen it, has been immaculate. And to be able to draw the aggro of four people, tunnel vision four people, in such an important game up the top lane and facilitate a free inhibitor turret for the bot lane, Flame is doing his job and then some this game. And to be fair, even though. You know, he kind of mucked up that first Aurelia game we saw against MVP White. He still played Aurelia in the next two games, and he played awesome after that. And this is his MO. He just gets aggressive, gets ahead, and then just basically, yeah, gets people to come at him and see what happens. 
And Azubu just takes so much advantage of that. They know what's going on. Look, Cobbler's still down the bottom lane. Captain Jack CS, 224 to 173 right now. I'm counting. But look Captain at this, Jack. though. The hard carries. I mean, Jack's free farming top. Cogmore free farming bot. And what can KD rolls to A really do to respond? They're kind of just picking up walls and, and sort of sacrificing a lot more and, than they're getting. And the three man Baron has been started by Azubu Blaze. They're barely going to need Jax here to help finish it, but he's going to do quite a bit of damage. Leona is going to ward and be very sad. The poor wall. Ward's over the top there and it's already gone. And now Zubu, it may be killing blow time for them. I mean, the gold lead already, 12,000 gold at 25 minutes. 6 0 in turret, 7 3. Not the perfect game they had against MVP White, but it's damn close. And KT, they're going to cross some fingers. And they really got to pull deep here. This is Zubu Blaze, from what we've seen at least today, Pastry Time, they perform when they need to. They do. And KT, I mean, they're a great team. They've played so well across multiple events. But they are being tested here by the power of Azubu Blaze. They took out Frost. That's a great achievement. All right now, looking grim. As Azubu Blaze continue to push into the base here. That's going to be one inhibited down the bottom lane. Flame actually going really deep, trying to pick up a kill there. Bit of zoning from Helios. Very nice. It's not just the kill base time. He's zoning out four people himself. Yeah. Mr. Trigger. Getting everybody out of the way so they can take out more turrets. Mid turret's going to fall very quickly here. And KT is not a whole lot they can do. They're going to lose one more inhibitor. I think maybe they're going to try and go in. Hero picks up Helios. Resets in a little bit of trouble. And the rest of KT haven't quite found a way in. And Cogmore is in a good spot. There's Ambition killing Leona. Reset gets absolutely mauled by Cogmore as well. And I think, sadly, GG's for KT fans. And rightly so as well. Azubu the Blaze. Comes out. They may have slipped up in a few of their game ones. But ever since they've been playing, Azubu Blaze have rocked every team when it counts and maybe you know what maybe they decide playing with the pressure because their games two and three have been immaculate the four of the six games we have seen them in they've gone two one in each of their best of threes and those four games when they win look looks like look, look stupidly easy i have to say and that is 